All right. Good morning, guys. This is November the 16th, 2021. I haven't seen many videos on YouTube. Oh, let me turn my camera around. I haven't seen many videos on YouTube of this, you know, of guys trying to get a little bypass until they get their money right or when they get ready to get out of business or whatever, because this is my last year in it, so... You know, I ain't trying to dump twenty five, thirty thousand in an engine rebuild. I only got eight hundred and seventy thousand miles. The engine runs good. I've never had any mechanical problems. Uh, I keep my oil changed every fourteen, sixteen thousand miles, like clockwork. Uh, I do my overhead every hundred thousand miles. Um, recently, I just started doing my overhead. Uh, maybe. Mm, yeah, but yeah, I started. I did my last overhead myself. I always know how to do it, but I was always scared to touch these Cummins. You know, I can run it on a Detroit or a Cat, but when I got this CM2250, you know, I was seeing so many horror stories, and I kept, you know, I never did do it. But today, what I'm doing is, uh, I'm gonna flip the camera around, let you guys see. All right, let me climb my butt up here. All right, all right, as you can see, uh. Or I guess we can say number two, my intake rocker, um, was, I noticed it when I got out, the engine was making a noise. It was chirping. You know, I can't really give you the ex this exact noise, but it was more of a chirp, chirp. And while it was idling, chirp, chirp. I mean, it was doing it on point. And that this happened last year. You know, I got my overhead ran at a certain shop, and I'm not blaming them. No, I'm not, because I know this is a notorious problem for Cummins. And... 10,000 miles later, I heard the engine go chirp, chirp, idle, chirp, chirp, idle. So I pulled the valve covers off, and this is what I found. I found that that lope right there was um, pitting, and that rocker arm was pitted pretty bad. That rocker roller was pitted pretty bad. So I was like, you know what? I ain't got but two more years in this. I've been doing this 20 years, and I'm tired, and I ain't going to let this come and bankrupt me. So what I did was uh, I put a little emery cloth on it, smoothed it out a little bit, um, but see the cam hasn't worn anymore, but I put this little emery cloth on it, smooth it as I can, replace with a new rocker arm, um, rim overhead, hundred thousand miles later, it done it again. So it lets me know it lasted a, a, over a year because I don't run that many miles anyway, because I'm semi-retired. Uh, I got a place in the Dominican Republic. I run a month and I go back over there for a month. So I don't run that many miles, but so, you know, the other morning I got out. Well, the other night, and I heard the same noise. Okay, so it's the same thing. So I pulled the valve covers, and boom, that's what it was. So, all right, maybe this rocker arm will last me another 100,000 miles, because next year I'm out of the business. I'm selling it. I'm retiring. So I already put the emmer cloth on it, cleaned it up, um, cleaned out the little metal shavings that was in that head bolt right there, in the, that little hole right there with the head bolt seat. So I cleaned all them shavings out. Pretty cleaned out pretty good everywhere. So... You know, I mean, I'm not telling you guys to do this. Y'all want to spend you thousands of dollars to fix the cam. Go ahead. I mean, I would if I was going to be a little bit more longer. But if I know this gets me by 80 to 100,000 miles, I'm going to do it. Truck runs fine. No, not missing at all. You know, because I've seen these problems on race cars. You know, I've seen them. The cams going bad. I mean, the roller rockers wearing out the cam hell and we rebuild it you know but this is my truck this is my last few years so hell no i'm not finna rebuild it after i finish with it it's for sale whoever want to buy it you know when i retire but this is what all i'm showing you guys this is what you want to do i've already cleaned the um lope up a little more you know so let's see if we can get a another hundred thousand miles you see i labeled all my bridges in case one fell off you know this is last time you know guys my first time pulling everything loose you know, I did one, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't want nothing to get mixed up. I even color coded my wire when it goes back on the solenoid. See, I put the little white paint strip on it. So I know which side it goes on. But uh, that's it. But I'm gonna get back with you guys in the next video after I got everything done. Now I tell you what, before I clear this video, let's uh, let me show you the the rocker assembly. All right. Here's the rocker when it first happened. As you can see, it chewed up that roller. That was the first time it happened last year. Then I replaced it with this one. Went to um, Peterbilt 
and bought another one, replaced it. And it done it. You know, I guess the pit's in it. Done it the same thing. But it only cost me $130 a rocker. You know, clean up everything, go back with a new. So here's the new rocker here. Picked it up yesterday, 130 bucks. Uh, cleaned up the whole rocker assembly real good. And I got all my screws labeled. I always try to put everything back in the same hole, regardless, even though the screws are the same length. I try to put them back in the same hole. And I got my zip ties on, so when I get ready to lay the bridge down, well, this assembly down, you know, I ain't got to worry about that Jake, that Jake um, rocker flipping upside down, because that's the one that always wants to do it, I guess, because all the weight is on the back of it. It wants to flip the other way. So this is going to help me go on and lay it down real easy. But I'll get back with you guys when it comes back to torquing them out. Bye-bye.